Hi, I'm Dr. John Grazel, the Baha'i Chair for World Peace at the University of Maryland, and this is the second in the synopsis uh, presentations I am making for the course that I give on uh, peace building, conflict reconstruction, and international development. These synopsis presentations are not meant to be complete and self-contained, but they are memory devices for the students in connection with the actual course. Uh, this one is in connection with the second class of the course. In the first class, in introducing international development, I made what uh, is somewhat of an ambitious statement in the sense that I defined international development as a phenomenon, a phenomenon that occurred from the end of World War II to the end of the Cold War, and which I make the claim has played an enormous role in the history of the 20th century and can, was a major framer of where we are today in the 21st century. I made the claim that it had many successes as well as failures. Uh, it provides us with much to learn, but I also make the claim that uh, today is not yesterday and we have to rethink our entire understanding of international development as we move forward, even as we have learned lessons. It has to teach us. The second claim I made is that the lessons may not be the ones that seem most obvious or are most often heard. We have shelves of books. Uh, the books divide between those that tell you why it didn't work, usually written by people who earned their salaries and pensions uh, supposedly making it work, and then we have uh, shelves of books that tell us what we have to do to make it work, which in many cases are uh, replays of what was done in the past. And the question is, do, are these really the things that we want to replay into the future? Now, the question is, on what basis do I make that claim? Well, in this course, we will study specific case studies on what happened and what were the results. And we'll look at various countries. We'll look at countries such as India and Korea, which were on the same approximate level in, in the 1960s. And today, Korea is one of the world's uh, major industrial powers. And though India is getting there, uh, it's amazing. But India is behind Korea. And we'll try to explain. And I think we can show how international development played a role in it. Uh, but. Uh, what I want to do today is back up my own opinions by the thoughts of some other people so that you think it is not just my opinion, but at least I have some other people in my ballpark. Now, I had to do some readings today, and the readings I had to do were some that are not read very much anymore. In particular, it was a reading by uh, uh, Petro Kropotkin, who was a famous anarchistic philosopher who, and a famous book he wrote called Mutual Aid, which, as the introduction to that book that you read, said by Ashley Montague, a famous anthropologist, might be considered one of the world's greatest books. I also had to read a selection from Margaret Mead, uh, a very well-known anthropologist, on how societies can be looked at as being situated somewhere on a spectrum between cooperation and competition, but why it was necessary to understand what the difference was between cooperation and something like helpfulness and between competition and something like actually doing revenge or, or damage. Uh, both of these works, however, were enormously important in terms of recognizing that, in fact, um, cooperation and the degree of cooperation in a society or Competition and the degree of competition is an important element in understanding not only how human societies work, but how they change. In the mutual aid book, what Kropotkin, a geographer, did was he drew upon his experiences in Siberia to actually refute social Darwinism, where others had taken the ideas of Darwin simplistically and seen those as survival of the fittest, Kropotkin noticed that, in fact, most animal life survived actually in relationships, in many cases, of uh, not only symbiosis, uh, but actual cooperation among each other. And then he traced through history how cooperation has been 
a major element in how people actually not only ran the societies, but how there have been major changes in societies. And the Mead writing shows that in a more refined way as how this is a distinguishing uh, element of most human societies. And Montague and Mead are not the only ones that have noticed that. Uh, one of the people I didn't have to read, but it was one of my favorite people in the world, one of the greatest thinkers in human history, somebody named Ibn Khaldun. Ibn Khaldun was an enormously uh, powerful philosopher from the Muslim world in the 15th century. Uh, and his work, actually, while incredibly extensive, uh, focused in particularly on how social solidarity, its existence and its exercise, was a major explanation for the rise and falls of peoples and empires, uh, movements and dynasties. Uh, so this idea of cooperation is enormously important. And as you will see as the course progresses, in my opinion, uh, international development and many of its successes is best understood by the nature of the collaboration, the competition, or the cooperation that it engendered between different groups of people, both within countries and groups that it was working, and between those who were seen as donors and those who were seen as recipients.